Occasionally we need to separate one type of traffic from another, perhaps because the traffic belongs to different customers or one type is less secure. One method of doing this is by creating additional routing tables which prevents the traffic from routing outside of its allowed area. In the Junos world, this is done with routing instances. But you may be more familiar with the Cisco name, VRF Lite. Not everyone will have used this, so let me give you a brief overview. Routers have routing tables. By default, they have one for each address family. That's one routing table for IPv4, another for IPv6, and there may be others, but we'll focus on IPv4 for now. This routing table is known as the global routing table. Using VRF Lite, we can create additional virtual routing tables and assign layer three interfaces to them. We can also configure routing protocols to use them. There are plenty of reasons why we might want to do this, but for an overview, let's focus on just one. We have an enterprise network, which consists of servers, workstations, printers, and other devices. We also have need for an additional network for third parties to install their equipment on. Maybe this is to install monitoring systems for our air conditioning or solar power or something like that. We decide that this network should be entirely separate from our regular network for security reasons. Rather than buying all new routers and switches, we can use features like VLANs and VRF Lite. VLANs separate traffic at layer two by creating virtual LANs and VRF Lite separates traffic at layer three by creating virtual routing tables. While VLANs might provide some separation, a router could easily pass traffic between VLANs. But if we virtualize the routing table as well, we create a fully separated virtual network. This is the base technology that service providers use to allow multiple customers to use their equipment while still keeping them separate. I understand that this concept may be confusing. I've compressed a lot of information into a very short time. I have a video dedicated just to this topic, so feel free to watch that first and then come back here. The Juniper equivalent of VRF Lite is called routing instances. There are several types of these, the most common of which are listed here. The types that match VRF Lite the closest are the no forwarding and virtual router type. Both of these types create an extra routing table. The virtual router type also creates a new forwarding table, while the no forwarding type does not. Routes from a no forwarding instance go into the global forwarding table. We might use a no forwarding instance if we want to run more than one instance of a dynamic routing protocol. Unlike Cisco, Juniper does not let you run multi-instance routing protocols, but you can have one per routing instance. We'll try this in the lab on the website if you want to see it in action. The forwarding type is used with filter-based forwarding. You may know this by the name policy-based routing. The idea is that we use firewall filters to match certain traffic and then apply different routing rules. This is a clever way of bypassing the regular routing table. Routing instances are defined under the routing instances hierarchy. We simply define a name and the instance type. We also add layer three interfaces under the routing instances. We'll see the effect of this soon. Config from other hierarchy areas can also go under here. For example, routing options, so we can add a static route to the routing instance. Here's an interesting message. On this platform, we require a license to run the virtual router routing instance. This is a warning message only, so in the lab, this won't stop you from using them. To see a list of instances, use show route instance. We can see the instance name, and we can see that it is the virtual router type. We also see the name of the new routing table that is associated with it. This is the name of the instance, followed by inet0. By adding the detail keyword, we are also able to see the interfaces associated with the instance. If we want to look at the contents of this routing table, we can use show route table followed by the routing table name. This includes the direct and local routes that are created by adding an interface, as well as the static route that we configured. This is one of those cases where similar technologies exist between different vendors, but they all have different names. 
Try to get used to the Juniper names if you can, especially if you want to pass the exam. We've now reached the end of part four, and we're nearly at the end of the series. In the final part, we're looking at monitoring and troubleshooting Juniper devices. Click that video, and I'll see you over there.